Okay, let's meet them. So first, as Mal, Maleficent's daughter, it's Dove Cameron. All right, then as Carlos, Cruella Deville's son, Cameron Boyce. As <laughs> Jay, Jafar's son, it's Boo Boo Stewart. <laughs> and as Uma, Ursula's daughter, China Ann McLean. Come on out. <laughs> and then finally, um, prolific executive producer, director, and choreographer, Kenny Ortega is here. <laughs> Welcome, everyone, to the Thank Apple you. Store so Soho. Much. Hello. Hello. How, How are, you? are you? Oh, good. Good. Really good. good. Everyone, um, can you update us on what's going on with your characters when we meet them again in Descendants 2? Yeah. So um, <laughs> basically, um, I think we kind of all decided it's been about six months okay. since the first film has ended. So was just that was that a writing thing, or did we? Yeah. How did you guys just like decide? Eh. We were all like, it's probably it's about six probably. months. Probably. Yeah, okay. Probably. We're I gonna say I six remember. months. Um, and so it's been just about enough time for the villain kids to either find their footing or figure out that they really can't find their footing mm -hmm. um, and sort of settle in or not settle into Auradon. Um So Mal is having a bit of a harder time adjusting than most, considering she is the daughter of the most evil. You know, she's got the most evil to right. sort out of her system. Um, and so she's, uh, she's attempting to play this sort of like Princess Kate role. Mm -hmm. um, and it's kind of, her, her levels are rising. She needs to get it's off hard. the island. Yeah, it's hard to be to on to all the, the time like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, something that we can relate to, I think. Yeah, I think um, for Carlos, his natural um, environment was never the Isle. Um, so mm. I think in Oridon, he's he feels a lot more at home, probably. Um, and he's starting to acclimate, obviously. He was sort of like a skittish, sort of similar to a dog. Kind of skittish <laughs> kid. Um, and he feels a lot more safe, probably, in Oridon. Um, safe enough to um, have feelings for people. Just saying... Just uh -oh. throwing that out there right now. What? Her Go theory ahead, is you confirmed. Say? Does she notice? <laughs> that, that one? She had a triple though. Uh, <laughs> no, but um, I think, yeah, I think Carlos is just sort of, because he's in Oradon now, um, he's feeling things that people don't normally feel in the aisle because they're always in uh, a lot of danger, I guess. He's blossoming. Yeah. 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 He's blossoming. Yeah, and as far as Jay goes, I feel like this, uh, similar to Carlos, you know, it's not his natural habitat, but he's found his place in, in Ordon. Um, he's the captain of a new sport called Swords and Shields, and uh, he's just really having a good time, I think. I think he's found his grounding. He's found, he's found where he's meant to be, I feel like. Cool. And Uma, we're going to talk about in a second. Because we're going to meet her for the first time. I was going to say, are there time. any Evie fans out there? Oh yes, an Evie. Yeah, yeah, I'll just I'll speak for uh, I'll speak for Sophia, who can't be with us today. Um, that um, Evie, you know, has a successful business. She's a um, fashion designer, and is only too happy to not even think about the Isle of the Lost anymore. And something happens to her during this story that's really fantastic. In that she suddenly realizes that she has a responsibility to all the kids that have been left behind and that haven't been given the opportunity that she or Mal or Jay or Carlos have. So all four characters um, have a sort of begin this venture in a new place in their lives. So great. Um, really quickly before we go on, I want to talk about hair. And there's a slide that goes along with this. Hair. Okay. Hey. Let's talk about Dang. Mal's hair. What's happening here? <laughs> what is the hair story? You know what's insane is that's not even all the hair changes that there are in the I know. Film. Some we didn't so even much. have. Yeah, there's for. so much more. There's so much hair. Uh, there's a lot of hair. <laughs> um, so actually, none of that is my hair. I think a lot of people think that the blonde is my blonde. Um, but that's actually a full-blown, every single one of those is a full-blown wig. Wow. Um, and uh, I think wigs play such a huge part in character transformation. And because I would say that the second film is actually twice as transformative for Mal than the first one, we got to have twice the amount of hair. Do you know got what I'm it. saying? Got yeah. it. And but it it's goes from purple yes. to blonde. Yes. I'm assuming it's th thematic. It's very thematic, yeah. Okay. Um, but you can see even when she's blonde, she still has her purple tips because you can't get... That's you, who she yeah, is. Yeah, exactly. You can't take all the evil out of the most evil of them all. 
And there's um, Carlos also has a slightly yes. different hairstyle. Yeah, for this yeah, one. I got the Bieber <laughs> flip. He going straightened right. it. Okay, wow. I want to know yeah. about those eyes. Oh, this God. hair. <laughs> okay, wow. tell, me, tell me how this look was achieved, yeah. and also, what does it mean about Carlos that he's now straightening his hair? Do you think? Oh, uh, uh, man, he's, like, really insecure Get with himself deep. or something. I don't know. No, um, Car no, Carlos is, uh, I mean, he grew his hair out. I guess that's how long, that's six months of growth. What is that? <laughs> um, <laughs> no, he's, um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I guess that's his new, that's his new thing. They wanted to I, know they, I know they wanted to switch it up. I know they wanted to make it edgy. And I don't know if, like, we fully got edgy. <laughs> but I mean, it's, <laughs> it's pretty definitely edgy. different, you know what I mean? <laughs> We were going yeah. for puppy. Yeah, Let's just good. be honest. We were yeah. going for puppy, puppy. not puppy. edgy. Okay, that well, then that makes a lot more sense, I guess. Like well, um, I, I yeah. love it. Hundred yeah, percent on good. board. Yeah, uh, Renata. Uh, she was kind of an angry German lady who did the wigs. She <laughs> was really great. She did all of them, so it was awesome. <laughs> all right. Okay, no more talk about hair. We're Sorry. moving on. Thank you. Um, <laughs> we are moving on in Descendants Two. There are some new villain kids on the block, so let's meet Uma with a clip. China! So good. Oh, good. Thank you. Okay, China. So Uma is Ursula from The Little Mermaid's Daughter. Yes. What can you tell us about Uma's backstory when you, when you stop laughing? Okay, listen. Uh, um, um, Mal and Uma have some bad blood mm -hmm. from back when they were children. So the fact that the four VKs were taken off of the Isle of the Lost and brought into Oridon, this amazing place filled with opportunity, you know, Uma was upset about it. She was like, really? Like, what about me? Yeah. So now in this film, in Descendants 2, she is coming for blood and for revenge because she's angry. She's over it. She is straight over it. Over it. Yeah. So what has, been, what has it been like joining this fun group? Oh, it's, it's been amazing. This entire press tour has just been, like, insane. We've been laughing. We love you so time. much. I love you guys. <laughs> oh. We've been laughing the entire time. It's the best thing I've ever done, honestly. It definitely shows, like, how tight you guys are in real life. It shows in the movie, too. By the way, we were not laughing at you. Cameron spit, no, all, spit over all over me <laughs> just a second ago. <laughs> I know I mean, it was something. I don't yeah. know if anybody saw that, but it was, like, a slow motion, a like, face. so much liquid yeah. onto my body. We ignored that for so. way too long, by the way. <laughs> I'm so Sorry, we're not laughing long. at China. Sorry. We could not keep it together. No, I know. What designer is this? I ruined fully it. Fully soaked. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, so Uma is not the only new villain kid that we meet in Descendants 2. So we also meet Dizzy, who is Drizella's daughter. Drizella is one of Cinderella's stepsisters, played by Anna Cathcart. And she was a, she was a fan originally, right, that, that Kenny, you found? Yeah, uh... uh yeah, you know, we take our time when we're casting uh, these movies and um, uh, put these people through so much before we finally select an actor. Because for me as the director, I'm always looking for partners as well as quality actors and singers and dancers. People that are going to come to work every day and bring something with them and not just wait for me to guide or steer them in a direction, but that have great ideas about their character and about the story and how to tell the story. We found this little girl and she hasn't done much. She's only done one other thing. And she's just so natural, and she just came into a room and revealed a personality that was so beautiful. But what we didn't find out when we met her was that she was an enormous fan of Descendants. And on her first day, when she came onto the set, every time one of these actors walked by, she started screaming. <laughs> and I fell in love with it, and I was like, that's your character. Your character looks at these older villain kids in the same way that you look at the stars of Descendants. And so we took some of that real life excitement that Anna brought to her first day of work and we invested it into her character. How cool is it that a fan gets to play a VK in this movie? That is so awesome. And a lot of you and beyond this room are always saying, you know, I want to be an actor. I want to be in your movies. How do I, you know, it happens. It can happen. And it's not winning the lotto. It's studying, practicing, doing the work, you know, but it's, it's possible, you know, dream, absolutely dream. It can happen. Absolutely. And there's a super cute behind the scenes special um, where Sophia and Anna um, sort of walk you through her, Anna's day on set. It's actually on iTunes right now. All right. Hey. The, ne the next 
villain kid we meet is Gil, who is Gaston from Beauty and the Beast's son. He's played by Dylan Fairchild with some great face makeup. Um, and then lastly, Harry Hook, son of Captain Hook, Woo! played by Thomas Doherty. Soup, I mean, amazing. <laughs> the first thing I think, said, I mean, <laughs> the first thing I think is Guy Liner. Guy Yo, why is that the Yo. first thing you said to me, Dove? You were like, yes, Guy Liner. Guy Liner. <laughs> so, cool. We also, just to say that Thomas Doherty came from all the way from Scotland. Yes. That we saw guys all over the United States and the UK and found uh, Thomas in Scotland. And Dylan Playfair came to us out of Vancouver, Canada. So our cast is really from all over as well. That's so great. So Kenny, why did you choose to get involved with Descendants? Why did I choose? I fell in love with the script. And then on the second movie, the fans. The fans who fell in love with the movie from all over the world. I mean, 100 million plus people saw the movie on it, representative of every continent on the planet. Um, and the, 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 the connection that the fans made with the movie was just so overwhelming and so special. I think all of us you know, wanted to do it again for them as much as for ourselves. And they've stayed with us. They've stayed with us for two years, you know, and have been patient in the waiting for Descendants too. And so it is our hope, all of us, I can say this confidently, that we have served our fans with a movie that they're going to enjoy and hopefully beyond what their expectations are. Absolutely, and what do you think is the best thing about working with this cast? Their generosity, they're amazing people, they're generous. They are loving, they are giving, they care about one another, they have each other's backs, they're smart, um, and they raise the bar on every day and make my life so special. And guys, what, what is it like working with Kenny? I mean, he is such an icon, Newsies, High School Musical, he choreographed for Michael Jackson, I mean. That deserves applause. <laughs> Come on. Huge. So what's it been like getting to be on set with him and learn from him? Absolutely incredible. <laughs> you can not too many words. Oh, legendary? Um, legendary, yeah, he's a legend. Um, a genius is the word I always use. I learned more in my time with him than I had throughout my entire career, I think. Well, no, definitely. I definitely <laughs> learned something new from him every day. And so um, I just hope that I get the chance to work with you again and learn more because... Yeah. yeah. Oh. You're you're not only one of I mean you're not only my favorite director but you're one of my favorite people in the world and I always say to everybody that if you put any random person in a room and you made them watch 10 movies in a row and you didn't explain to them which one Kenny had directed it would be very clear if you made them watch 30 movies or 100 movies because everything that he does has this magical golden glow to it because he doesn't do anything outside of the lines of his integrity and his vision and it's so unique and we're all incredibly blessed to know you. Yeah, there's a we lot of you. joy in your work and really strong storytelling. Yeah, he's um I mean I mean I think all of us can say that we were like Michael Jackson fans and <laughs> James Humans. Brown fans <laughs> alive in the world yeah. and Aretha Franklin fans and just like the list goes on and on with the people that he's worked with um and the knowledge and the wisdom that he's gained in the years that he's worked with these incredible people, Gene Kelly and like the list just is insane. Um, we're, we're just so fortunate to be able to spend, you know, the three weeks of rehearsal period and then the two months of filming um, with a man who every day gives you a little bit more and a, a little tidbit here and a little hint there and a little something here um, and um, what you can take with that as a performer and just run with it is like insurmountable, it's like crazy, so thanks Kenny, <laughs> yeah. you're awesome. Kenny's not only like our director but He's our friend, and like that's what makes it so special, because we want to be good for him, because he's our friend. You know, and I don't want to like. I don't. We don't want to disappoint Kenny, you know, because we really care about him, and I think that's what. That's why he, he brings the best out of us, because we care about what he's doing. So. That's that's so nice. Okay, follow up question for Boo Boo. Um, because I want you to talk more. <laughs> um, we all do. <laughs> um, Boo Boo, what is your favorite moment from filming Descendants 2? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, boo boo. <laughs> uh, my favorite moment, honestly, for, it's for both films, the first and the second. I really love the rehearsal process. Yeah. You know, I. Rehearsals are interesting. You know, there are time when you know we're all getting together for the first time. We're all in the same room, and we're all just learning together. We're learning everything for the first time together, and so it's really it's like a very vulnerable experience, especially because. Um, you know, just dancing is a very vulnerable thing if you're not like totally 100% comfortable in your body. So to be doing it with everybody kind of breaks any wall that you've put up or anything like that. So it's Pretty nice. Strong bond. It is, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so when you get onto the set, um, having that rehearsal period beforehand, I think really the trust. Us, yeah, together. Yeah. It's like so the mo like the movie is born in rehearsal. Yeah, yeah. And, and so. what's fun for me is I can step outside and I can watch it. And to watch these young people find the movie and bring it to life over this short period of time. And that, that, and that the connection that they have with one another is so organic and it happens in such a natural way. Things that I could never think of or direct or that even aren't on the page that happen just magically because they're open and receptive to each other's ideas. Um, it's where the movie's born in rehearsal. I, it's my favorite part too. It's, boo -boo. it's definitely my favorite part. Yeah, it's where ideas too. are just sort of thrown at the wall. And um, a lot of the times they don't stick, which is interesting because you know you see the movie and you think, oh, somebody said do this, this, and that, and then that's what we ended up doing. Um, but there's trial and error in everything that we do. Um, and there are times where like, you see something in the movie and that's what we had at first and then we changed it and then we go back and we reverse it. You guys remember um, Set It Off? We had, learned, yes. we had learned a dance move one way well, like, for like for like, for like weeks, months. we had been but rehearsing it the same way. Like the, this dance move. And we move did it like the last very, thing. We, it, literally. So it like and, and Kenny walks in and he's like, I like this. I like this. Do it the reverse way. Five, reverse. six, seven, eight. And we're like, ah! <laughs> But you know that's that's what it is, and we just sort of do it, and it's 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 crazy, and it's really fun. We actually had the writers. Kenny brought the writers in to our rehearsals to sit and watch us rehearse. That's that how was powerful so the cool. rehearsals are. That yeah, was yeah. so. You cool. talking about in D two? Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. ended up changing yeah, yeah. the script. And they, they were like, like wow. we're inspired by this. Yeah. 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 And they actually said that it was their most favorite day ever working on the movie was sitting there with their papers in front of them with the entire cast in front of them rehearsing. They didn't get much writing done. They were just like <laughs> enthralled. But I remember you also, you had some of us go up to them and, and we had already done our table read and you said, what do you want more of? Is there anything that you feel that your storyline or your character is missing? What are you not comfortable with? And the writers took our ideas into account and, and they really incorporated us. Like you said, you always try to make everybody a partner. That's so awesome. Um, what do you think it is about the story in Descendants that has resonated so much with so many fans? China. <laughs> well, I mean, I think it's just the message in general, just being who you are. Mm -hmm. And I feel like a lot of people, um, no matter what you do in life, whether you're a teenager going to high school, you know, you feel like you're in this world where you're kind of an outsider. And I really liked that. Kenny and the VKs really explored that in the first film. Like all of them were just dropped into Oradon and they were like, well, I guess we got to figure things out from here, you know, but they still remained who they were. And I think that that message really resonated with a lot of fans. It resonated with me for sure the first time I watched it. Absolutely. Um, we, oh. um, we have a lot of like pretty colors and fancy dance moves, but people yes. don't care about a project um, if characters aren't relatable. Um, if there isn't a moral that sort of resonates with an audience and sticks with people. Um, so people think of Descendants and they think of, you know, this, and mm -hmm. they think of, you know, the dancing and the singing, um, which all really adds to our storytelling, but at the end of the day, it is really about the storytelling, and that's what we pride ourselves on. Yeah, it's a story about being yourself at the end well, of the day. Mal's character, I mean, is the quintessential character in, with, with respect to that. I mean, you should talk a little bit about it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I was going to say, I actually just kind of had a thought that, because I know that we all love a villain. I love a villain. And I know that, I mean, if you think about a musical like Wicked, where we want to see, you know, the opposite side of the stories that we've been told. Yeah. And we want to hear the untold story and see what's behind the veil. I do think that there's something to, you know, as an audience member, especially for me, just speaking personally, I love to see a villain because when you go into something expecting, you know, I think characters are so 
like a character as we expect it to be is a one dimensional being. And so when you see somebody who you expect to be one dimensional and sort of negatively connotated, mm -hmm. you're more forgiving and more noticing of their positive qualities. And you can kind of find yourself more in an evil character, an evil character more so than I think you can a one sided, one dimensional sort of hero. Um, sure, because no one's perfect. Right? You know what I mean? Um, and so I, I think that that's why it's so addictive. Yeah. Because we, we see ourselves in it. My, one of my favorite quotes is, you don't go to the theater. Nobody goes to the theater to watch you. They're going to the theater to watch themselves. So true, yeah. Absolutely. And for Mal especially, she sort of has to find her path a bit. Oh, yeah. I mean, she's been given the... She's been named the daughter of the most evil of anybody ever to exist ever. Right. But she's got her own, you know sort of path in life and she's got a very beautiful vulnerable heart and she loves really fiercely um, and so and she's also a teenager you know there's so, so much going there's on there's a lot happening <laughs> <laughs> so she's got to kind of figure it out um, and then sort of be the the guiding light for all of her friends as well yeah yeah it's a tough job <laughs> someone's got to do it <laughs> <laughs> um, okay let's talk about the pretty colors and the dance moves now pretty colors. Um, so what is everyone's favorite song to perform in both movies or just the second one? In both movies. Rotten. 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 Ways? Yeah. I think Rotten? My Ways I th is good too. I think my favorite's Chillin'. Ooh. Yeah. Okay, well. Ooh. How many <laughs> okay, of you guys well, have heard right, Chillin' have like you, a villain? Have you heard Chillin' yet? Okay. No, oh, it's right. so oh. good. One hand. Oh. One hand. One hand. One hand. Three. All we of our moms are raising their hands. <laughs> okay, you guys are going to like it. I That's change good. my yeah. mind every single time someone asks me what my favorite song and dance number in the movie is. I can't. Well, what is it today? I can't. What about you and me? What is it today? I, every time I watch you and me, I'm more and more shocked. I love that. I, I mean, love that finale. It's today, so today, I'm going to say... Um, Chillin's kind of... <laughs> it's really oh, yeah. good. Kind of great, yeah. Just get ready Can't for it to be stuck that. in your head yeah. forever. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. so she good. She wrecks it. She yeah. just wrecks she, it. Yo, you guys, you guys everything she does. It. Beyonce. Her first number, like oh, when you first God. meet her. It's like, remember, <laughs> remember in the first movie when uh, all the villain kids came out and rotten to the core and it was like, whoa, who is that? Who are these guys? That's she does it, but exactly she's one person. That's exactly what it is <laughs> in this movie. It's like her first moment and she just like comes out like a fireball it's crazy <laughs> she's so amazing sweet. all right it is time for you guys to get to ask questions hi um what was it like coming to the sequel knowing the first one was so successful versus when the first one no one knew what it was good question, really good question. dove um <laughs> i think always every time dove um, I think that for what for me, what I felt was in the first film because there was a bit of a pressure because we were inventing new characters that had never been nobody had had permission to build them before, but they were coming from such heritage characters that we were in a way embellishing on really classic stories. Mm -hmm. So there was a bit of a pressure, but also not really because nobody knew, like you said. And I think we didn't expect the reaction so this time there was almost more freedom because we just went out doing exactly what was natural to us in the first film and the fact that people responded well just gave us even more leeway to just go even further into our natural instincts so I was gonna say to the fans you really need to know how important you are those of you that are here that are real fans descenders that you really are important and I think if there's any challenge, the biggest one, I think for everyone, for the writers, for the studio, for the actors, for myself as a director, uh, um, I think that it's that we want to serve you and that we want to, you know, we want to make a movie that takes you to the next part of our adventure that satisfies you and that gives you all that you're hoping for. And I think that that was our biggest goal was to come up to your expectations. What was the challenging part in the movie? Like, what was like the hardest and the easiest in the movie? Cameron? <laughs> yes, yes. Um, I always say the hardest part, um, well, I think physically the hardest part is <laughs> after that three weeks of rehearsal when you can't move your body. <laughs> I li I, you literally get out of bed and you're like moving your legs. Your muscles like, are I can't locked. move them. Um, it's it's insane. It's it's really weird, actually, how um, stiff and tense your body gets. <laughs> which um, and and it's it's interesting too, though, because you know it, you 
it's kind of like joking, but we still have to dance and we still have to act. So we have to take care of our bodies. We have to, you know, go and get massages and go and, you know, make sure we do uh, Epsom salt Stretches, baths yeah. and sleep really warm. And like there are things that we have to do outside of set. Um, so it's really just the maintenance and like keeping up with the schedule. And that's probably the most important and um, the most difficult. And then the easiest would probably be, um, I think coming in, um, you don't really know how you're going to gel with certain people. You're not really sure if the chemistry is really going to be there and um, that, the, uh, that your scene partners are going to give you everything that you want and um, that you're going to give that in return. Um, and I think the easiest part for this project was just that it was really easy We're to obsessed with be other. with these people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was probably the easiest part. Oh. Awesome. You don't want to say that the hardest part was sword fighting? That was that was difficult as well. Yeah, because yeah, we had to learn like <laughs> positions. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was insane. hard. One, two, three, three, three or four. four. Yeah, three, four, five, five, five six, six, seven, seven eight. 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 Right. Yeah. Yeah. eight. And that's just one side of it. Yeah. You gotta learn the whole thing. Yeah, you gotta thing. learn, then you gotta learn attack, the attack and defending one. at that And then they're like, one, three, five, seven, <laughs> defend. We're like, wait, wait, nobody <laughs> talked about this. Chronological order, people. Yeah, yeah. we are <laughs> actors. I know. But I think one of the hardest parts for me was moving from the um, the rehearsal space onto the actual set. Because during rehearsal, you have all of the space. You're on a soundstage, and then you move onto a ship, and then you don't have that much space, you know? So that was one of the hardest parts for me. If, if you could you change, change one part of the movie, what which one, would which part it would it be? Would it be? That was Whoa. the cutest question I've ever heard so in my life. So but you cute. guys, you all have to answer the question Together. at the same okay. time. Okay. Right. Wait, okay, so, so basically, I think I would like to be right to the I core. Don't like you spit on me. You guys are adorable. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, it, that was so cute, I forgot the question. I know. If, uh, if you, you could change one. You could change one. Let's all say it at the same time, too. Boo-boo, come on, boo-boo. What would you change? Boo-boo, talk, boo-boo. If I could change. Talk, boo-boo, talk. Uh, well, okay. I don't want to give too much away, you know. I know, I know. But there's there's a little hint at a at the playing of Rotten to the Core. Like you just hear it a second for like the slightest bit, and I really like that song. And when you hear it in the movie, I really re every time I've seen the movie, I really want the song to continue on and to drop into like the full bit, and it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, okay, boo boo. Descendants 3. Descendants 3. I, know, Descendants three. I, I feel like it should. Rotten to the core. I feel like it should. <laughs> Honestly, I have never thought about that question before. Um, but now that I'm thinking about it, I guess for me, there was such a huge emotional dilemma in the first one with like the idea of letting your parents down. Like that's just something that's beaten into us since we're born, you know? Like you don't want to let your parents down. I mean, it's like, we don't want to let Kenny down. Um, it's like the same thing. It's like that would be the worst feeling. And so that's something that's really difficult to fight against. And I really want, I think I wanted more of that for Mal in this one, because in this one, it's a bit more like she's growing up and she's fighting against her own nature versus her new circumstance. But I, I think I wanted a bit more of that, and maybe in Descendants 3, if there is one, um, I'd love to explore that again, because that never leaves you. You know, you never want to let your parents down, no matter how, how, how old you get, or if you're in junior year or sophomore year, you know? Well, that is all the time we have, unfortunately. The cast has to run. But we wanted to thank everyone so much for thank coming you. out today. And thanks to the cast and Kenny for being here. Don't forget, Descendants 2 premieres on Disney Channel July 21st. And you can pre-order it, pre-order the soundtrack, download the karaoke apps and the books on iTunes.com slash Descendants. Thanks so much. We can relate to, I think. Yeah, I think um, for Carlos, his natural um, environment was never the aisle. Um, so mm. I think in Oridon, he's he feels a lot more at home, probably. Um, and he's starting to acclimate, obviously. He was sort of like a skittish, sort of similar to a dog. Kind of <laughs> skittish kid. Um, and he feels a lot more safe, probably, in Oridon. Um, safe enough to um, have feelings for people. Just saying. Just uh -oh. throwing that out there right now. What? Her Go theory ahead, is confirmed. Say? Does she notice <laughs> that, that one? She had a triple. Uh, <laughs> no, but um, I think, yeah, I think Carlos is just sort of, because he's in Oradon now, um, he's feeling things that,
people don't normally feel in the aisle because they're always in uh, a lot of danger, I guess. He's blossoming. Yeah. yeah. He's blossoming. Yeah, and as far as Jay goes, I feel like this, uh, similar to Carlos, you know, it's not his natural habitat, but he's found his place um, in Ordon. Um, he's the captain of a new sport called Swords and Shields. And uh, he's just really having a good time, I think. I think he's found his grounding. He's found, he's found where he's meant to be, I feel like. Cool. And Uma, we're going to talk about in a second, because we're going to meet her I for the first say, time. I was going to say, are there any EV fans out there? Oh, yes, an EV. Yeah, yeah, I'll, just, I'll, speak for, uh, I'll speak for Sophia, who can't be with us today, um, that um, EV you know, has a successful business. She's a um, fashion designer and is only too happy to not even think about the Isle of the Lost anymore. And something happens to her during this story that's really fantastic in that she suddenly realizes that she has a responsibility to all the kids that have been left behind and that haven't been given the opportunity. In real life, it shows in the movie. Too. By the way, we were not laughing at you. Cameron spit no, all, spit over, all me over me just a second ago. <laughs> I know I mean, that was I don't yeah. know if anybody saw that, but it was like a slow motion, like a so much liquid yeah. onto my body. We ignored that for so. way too long, by the way. <laughs> I'm oh sorry, we were not laughing at China. Sorry. We could not keep it together. No, I know. What designer is this? I ruined fully it. Fully soaked. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so... Uma is not the only new villain kid that we meet in Descendants 2. So we also meet Dizzy, who is Drizella's daughter. Drizella is one of Cinderella's stepsisters, played by Anna Cathcart. And she was a, she was a fan originally, right, that, that Kenny, you found? Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. You know, we take our time when we're casting uh, these movies and um, uh, put these people through so much before we finally select an actor. Because for me, as the director, I'm always looking for partners as well as quality actors and singers and dancers, people that are going to come to work every day and bring something with them and not just wait for me to guide or steer them in a direction, but that have great ideas about their character and about the story and how to tell the story. We found this little girl, and she hasn't done much. She's only done one other thing. And she's just so natural, and she just came into a room and revealed a personality that was so beautiful. But what we didn't find out when we met her was that she was an enormous fan of Descendants. And on her first day, when she came onto the set, every time one of these actors walked by, she started screaming. <laughs> and I fell in love with it, and I was like, that's your character. Your character looks at these older villain kids in the same way that you look at the stars of Descendants. And so we took some of that real life excitement that Anna brought to her first day of work and we invested it into work. I guess that's his new, that's his new thing. They wanted to, I, know they, I know they wanted to switch it up. I know they wanted to make it edgy. And I don't know if like we fully got edgy. <laughs> but I mean, it's, it's, it's definitely edgy. different, you know what I mean? <laughs> We were going yeah, for puppy. Yeah, Let's just good. be honest. We were yeah. going for puppy, puppy. not puppy. edgy. Okay, that well, then that makes a lot more sense, I guess. Look at well, you. I, um, I yeah. love it. Hundred <laughs> yeah, percent on good. board. Yeah, uh, Renata. Uh, she was kind of an angry German lady who did the wigs. She <laughs> was really great. She did all of them, so it was awesome. <laughs> all Pretty right. Good. Okay, no more talk about hair. We're Sorry. moving on. Thank you. Um, <laughs> we are moving on in Descendants Two. There are some new villain kids on the block, so let's meet Uma with a clip. China! So good. Oh, good. Thank you. Okay, China. So Uma is Ursula from The Little Mermaid's Daughter. Yes. What can you tell us about Uma's backstory when you, when you stop laughing? Okay, listen. Uh, um, um, Mal and Uma have some bad blood mm -hmm. from back when they were children. So the fact that the four VKs were taken off of the Isle of the Lost and brought into Oridon, this amazing place filled with opportunity, you know, Uma was upset about it. She was like, really? Like, what about me? Yeah. So now in this film, in Descendants 2, she is coming for blood and for revenge because she's angry. She's over it. She is straight over it. Over it. Yeah. So what has, been, what has it been like joining this fun group? Oh, it's, it's been amazing. This entire press tour has just been, like, insane. We've been laughing. We love you so time. much. I love you guys. <laughs> We've been laughing the entire time. It's the best thing I've ever done, honestly. It definitely shows, like, how tight you guys are. Okay, let's meet them. So, first, as Mal, Maleficent's daughter, it's Dove Cameron. <laughs> All right, then, as Carlos, Cruella Deville's son, Cameron Boyce. 
as <laughs> Jay Jafar's son. It's Boo Boo Stewart. <laughs> and as Uma, Ursula's daughter, China Ann McLean. Come on out. <laughs> and then finally, um, prolific executive producer, director, and choreographer, Kenny Ortega is here. <laughs> Welcome, everyone, to the Thank Apple you. Store Soho. So Hello. Hello. How, How are you? Are you? Oh, good, good. Really good. good. Everyone, um, can you update us on what's going on with your characters when we meet them again in Descendants 2? Yeah, so um, <laughs> basically, um, I think we kind of all decided it's been about six months since okay. the first film has ended. So was just that was that a writing thing, or did we? Yeah, how did you guys just like? Uh, we were all like, it's about, it's about six probably. months. Probably, yeah, okay. probably. We're I gonna say I six remember. months. Um, and so it's been just about enough time for the villain kids to either find their footing or figure out that they really can't find their footing mm -hmm. um, and sort of settle in or not settle into Auradon. Um, so Mal is having a bit of a harder time adjusting than most, considering she is the daughter of the most evil. You know, she's got the most evil to right. sort out of her system. Um, and so she's, uh, she's attempting to play this sort of like Princess Kate role. Mm -hmm. um, and it's kind of, her, her levels are rising. She needs to get it's off hard. the island. Yeah, it's hard to be to on to all the, the time like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, something that opportunity that she or Mal or Jay or Carlos have. So all four characters um, have a sort of begin this venture in a new place in their lives. So great. Um, really quickly before we go on, I want to talk about hair. And there's a slide that goes along with this hair. OK, hey. let's talk about Dang. Mal's hair. What's happening here? <laughs> what is the hair story? You know what's insane is that's not even all the hair changes that there are in the I know. Film. There's Some we didn't so even much. have. Yeah, there's for. so much more. There's so much hair. Uh, there's a lot of hair. <laughs> um, so actually, none of that is my hair. I think a lot of people think that the blonde is my blonde. Um, but that's actually a full-blown, every single one of those is a full-blown wig. Wow. Um, and uh, I think wigs play such a huge part in character transformation. And because I would say that the second film is actually twice as transformative for Mal than the first one, we got to have twice the amount of hair. Do you know got what I'm it. saying? Got yeah. it. And but it goes from purple yes. to blonde. Yes. I'm assuming it's th thematic. It's very thematic, yeah. Okay. Um, but you can see even when she's blonde, she still has her purple tips because you can't get... That's you, who she yeah, is. Yeah, exactly. You can't take all the evil out of the most evil of them all. And there's... Um, Carlos also has a slightly yes. different hairstyle Yeah, for this yeah, one. I got the beaver <laughs> flip He straightened right. it. Okay, wow. I want to know yeah. about those eyes. Oh, this God. hair. No. Okay, Smize and wow. tell, me, tell me how this look was achieved. Yeah. And also, what does it mean about Carlos that he's now straightening his hair, do you think? Oh, uh, uh, man, he's like really insecure Get with deep. himself or something. I don't know. No, um, Car no Carlos is, uh, I mean, he grew his hair out. I guess that's how long, that's six months of growth. What is that? <laughs> um, <laughs> no, he's, um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Like,